Yeah, Jamie, um, uh, some, of, some of those games have had statistics where a lot of anomalies in the statistics, but um, at the end of the day, what it boiled down to was you guys couldn't get the ball in the bucket. Um, what, did, what, what did you make of the game? Was it just the wrong, uh, bad execution, just couldn't get the shots in? Or was it some other yeah, look, I actually felt like we had a, enough good looks um, at times, and I just felt like, you know, around the basket, we just... You know, a, if a couple of finishes had gone in, if we had made a couple more of those threes, we could have, you know, stayed a bit closer you know, in the game. So, but yeah, and then on top of that, you know, there is still some uh, execution issues there. And and then look, you know, we had a real hard time with Blanche in the first quarter, and then Bryce you know, killed us in the second. And you know, so their their talent just um, yeah kept their scoreboard rolling over, and yeah, found it really hard to contain those guys. Yeah, look, I thought we actually did have some possessions there where we, you know, we talked about driving through elbows, you know, it's like, you know, shot fake and drive back through, back, drive it back again through those elbows. But, you know, they, they were quite compact in there and it would come out again. And again, I just don't feel like we, yeah, we just made enough shots there. Um, so, yeah, there was that, that conversation, you know, probably more going into that second half about getting that two feet in the paint a second time. Um, but, yeah, probably not often enough. Yeah, there was that, but I, I said to the guys, you know, as you know, as disappointed as we are, you know, like I, you know, I find it hard to, you know, fold our effort. Our effort's right up there, and that kind of that statistics does does show that they're not like those rebounds were just long rebounds just bouncing in our hands. And you know, we did chase them. We did bring that effort to go and get those. You know, yes, we did miss a lot of shots, so. You know, I don't know what the offensive rebounding percentage works out to be, but um, I, I did, again, there's a lot of great things in the effort areas. Um, but, yeah, at the end of the day, we, as you said, we just couldn't really put that, that ball in the hole, in the hole uh, often enough. And uh, you, you changed it up in terms of the starting time. You brought in, t- the, went for three guards, brought in Kai as well. Um, what was the thinking behind that? Obviously, Cam Bears, though, there has to be one change at least. Um, what was sort of the thinking behind the yeah, so the thinking was more to do with how we were subbing after that initial period. Um, I knew they'd start Majok and they'd go to their small ball lineup, and I just felt like I needed to, Kai needed to play at the start of the game, definitely, when Majok was on the floor, because he was going to probably struggle once they had the Wagstaff Law small ball lineup. Um, so that was why bringing him in. And uh, and I guess Tad was, you know, Tad did a really good job for us in the in the second half there on Friday. Uh, I also felt like uh, Maka carried a big load on that Friday night, and just to move him off the ball uh, for periods of time, so that he's not, you know, he was going to he had this starting matchup on Vic Law, so he was going to have to be really locked into that defensive end of the floor. So I also didn't want him um, having to, you know also had the responsibility of getting the ball in, running the team, you know, wanting him to be a little bit freer on the weak side and lock into that defensive assignment. And uh, how did you enjoy starting there? Um, a lot of ball handling duties for yourself. Um, how did you enjoy, I guess, the extra responsibility? You know, you hit the scoreboard as well, didn't you? Um, you know, it's good. You know, if you give Macca a break and let him do what he does best, you know, off the ball and... You know, he's, he's great for us on both ends of the floor, so anytime I can take that load or help us, you know, try and win games, I'm, I'm all for it. And uh, what was, um, as Jamie touched on it briefly, but in your view, what did you think the tail of the tape was today? From your end, the effort was there, but the shots just weren't dropping? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you go six from six from the first quarter, it's kind of tough. You know, we got to make adjustments and things like that, but they, they definitely made shots when they needed to, when we made, made runs and some back-breaking shots there, some breakdowns, you know, on my part as well. But, you know, it's it's tough when you're making those runs and they're just things seem to be going the way for them. Credit to them because they have some talent and they, they've they they've shown that they've done this year in, year out. But, you know, there's some adjustments we could have made and, you know, hopefully we'll fix those by next week. And uh, last one from me, uh, Jamie. 
Costo looked like he left the game early in the second quarter. Was it a, was it a corky or just yeah, yeah, it was a corky. Um, yeah. They said, uh, you know, the, our medical team said that you've got to keep him going because um, once he stops, he, they think he'll be done. So I gave him that, uh, that stint after the cork and you could just see just, you know, he just, you know, obviously at his size, he's not the quickest guy up on the floor and you could just see he was labouring with it. Um, so, yeah, basically they, I was told that, you know, once we went through that half-time period, it was going to be really hard to get that go- him up and going again. So, yeah, they pretty much ruled him out for the rest of the game. You're just really running out of big men, unfortunately. I yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at the bigger picture of it, you know, losing Isaac Humphreys, obviously, uh, at the start of the season. You know, obviously um, Bear as well now for the moment um, until that gets sorted out. And, um, yeah, and then Kai gets injured. It's, you know, it's, you know we, we, need, we need those five men, those dominant, rim-protecting, defending bigs, so that DJ can do what he does best, and that's score the ball in the end of the floor. So we, you know we try and keep DJ in that four spot, and when DJ's got to go and you know guard fives, and you know is responsible for guarding a lot of pick and roll action, and then we're asking him to score down the other end as well. It's a it's a massive load for him to carry. Uh, we we need him to play, you know, get most of his energy and effort into the scoring the ball for us. And yeah, running out of bigs definitely. Um, you know, credit to him, he just keeps battling, keeps battling. But yeah, we need that. You know, we definitely need that rim protection. Joe, did you get there back for the next game? Look, I think so. Um, he's getting some tests on Monday, and yeah, from there, yeah, we we go from there. We try and find out, you know, what the issue is, and and then go from there. So. Was it a was it a tough conversation with Ty? How, how did he sort of deal with that, that news that he's uh, lost his spot in the starting five? Oh, that's the thing about Todd. He's fantastic. Just in, in regards to it, so it's whatever it takes, you know. And, and look, and I explained it to him exactly what the reasoning was. It was, you know, I think um, a job plays, you know, 15 maybe 20 minutes a game. He'll start, and um, we need to get the most as we could out of Kai, you know. And so that means that you know, Kai needs to start. Um, again, the, the reasons I spoke about as well. I just felt like you know, Macca logged big minutes on Friday, and I just felt like yeah, taking a little bit of pressure off him. Uh, bringing the ball was it was the best way to go. Is that something you'll continue to roll with? Yeah, look, I, I like I like the idea of you know you getting Macker off the ball at times throughout the game. I think you know to take a little bit of pressure off him, let him sort of survey the action from the weak side, and he's a high IQ player, you know. So when you get him on the weak side, he makes really good reads, um, you know, on the action, you know. So it, it, it's it's good to get him off the ball at times, and again let him play a bit freer uh, on that weak side. Will you, um, will you still in the market for a third import? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We, there's a number of names that CJ's looking at right now. And, um, yeah, so I think that's going to... If it's going to happen, it's going to happen pretty quickly. Both imports starting on the on the bench. Obviously, it's not where you would have thought you'd, you'd, you'd be at this point of the, the season. How, how do you assess, assess those, those two guys this far in? Yeah, look, it's um, you know, it's a matter of you know, yeah, scoring, trying to find that balance between scoring the ball and being a defensive team. You know, sort of Todd, Todd brings that defensive utility type player, and Dusty is really that 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 scorer type player. And so it's trying to get that balance between offense and defense. And I thought today was today was tough because you know they you know in their guard positions really. You know, you go, I think I've kind of put Vic Law in that spot. It's like. You know, the high-powered scorers, and so we really need to, to try and turn the game into a grind and and try and keep it a low-scoring affair. We weren't able to do it, and so it sort of the mentality coming into the game was a bit more of a you know defensive grind. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we couldn't we couldn't do that. Is uh, is CJ back in the, the chair? Yes, yes. So CJ will be back in the chair next week. So I'll have a, I'll have a few days of training uh, with the boys before CJ is available again. But yeah, he'll be back in the chair for next game. No worries. That's, that's all from me. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.